Hello and welcome to our very first Python video for the course. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can get you started computing with Python. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up Anaconda Navigator. So here I already have it ready to go. I'm on a Mac, by the way, but I don't really care about that stuff too much. You like what you like. See, it takes its sweet time to load up. Say OK. We want to go to the Jupyter Notebook. We want to launch it. Now this is going to open up Terminal. So wait a little bit for that to happen. It's going to open up the web browser. It's going to redirect me. So all of these things are normal things. And we have terminal running down here underneath. We want to leave terminal running. So that's got to go ahead and stay open. Um, definitely makes you feel sort of like an early 90s hacker, which is why I like to wear a flannel and a little get a, get a backwards baseball cap too. So you can really feel like you're, you know, hacking into the, the, the mainframe here. We got a brought to you by Starbucks coffee. Now just full disclosure, I'm not really a computer science kind of person, but I certainly think that a little bit of computing can be a lot of bit of fun. So let's go ahead and jump in here. We're gonna to wanna to open up a new Python project and this is over here on the right hand side. Open it up. Now, provided you have everything already downloaded to your local system, from the getting started guide, we should be ready to go. Um, we do want to start maybe by putting our name and our student ID number in there, uh, along with some of the other questions that I've prompted you to fill out. In order to send, you know, little messages, it's best to sort of use the, the hashtag to not get an error. If I just want to type my name, I can do that, I can run it, but it's not going to like it. It says, what are you doing? Don't you ever say that to me again. However, I do this, then it says, okay, we can, we can say that. So you're probably more used to this than I am. Use hashtags if you want to communicate with me, if you want to say something. Uh, you can do that a bunch. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a bit about our programming then. So we'll jump into this. The very first thing that I want to do is I want to wake up the resources. From resources 306 import. And if you're expecting it to do anything, it shouldn't. Right? It likes that I've set this up. If it spits back an error message, that would be a problem. So let's say I didn't quite type it in correctly. Well, didn't like that. So it's bad when it says something to me at this point. So as long as everything's working, it's working. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we have for our project. So I got some information in here. Yeah, Kesha, shout out to Kesha. Page 12, we can talk a little bit about lint space. Let's go here to page 12. What do we got on page 12? With the lint space function, I've already imported my resources. I can just start by copying and pasting the code. Let's see what that looks like. So this one's actually ready to go. A few things to sort of point out about this. Right here in the first line of code, we have three fields that we can enter in. Um, first two give me a range on T, a horizontal axis. So we see it's showing from negative one to two. Well, that's because I have it set to show from negative one to two. If I want this to go from negative 17 to 23, I can just change those fields. And we see now my exponential curve looks a little bit funny. So let me just put this to, uh, let's do negative three to four. Probably gives me a nice, nice view. This third entry here just talks about how many points are going to be used in order to generate the curve. Anything above 200 usually isn't going to generate something better. So if I up this to 300, it doesn't really even look that much better. If I bring it down to 100, it probably still looks just as good reasonably. But if I really start lowering this, we're going to see that it doesn't quite look like an exponential curve anymore. It looks a little bit more jagged. So not quite as nice and always fun to, if I just do two, 
yeah, well, that's not looking so great anymore. So we like to just probably leave this at 200. Um, probably not necessary to mess with it unless you have a specific reason doing that. We have our plt.plot, and then here we have t, calling on variable t, and then here we have np.exp for exponential functions. Now the np, referring to numpy, is only something that we would need if we were working with exponential functions, logarithmic functions, something like that. And if I want to change this to e to the negative t, I can do that. Um, since I don't really need a coefficient there, I could just write e to the minus t. But if I want something like e to the 3t, it's not going to like it unless I use the star for multiplication. So there we go. So I can sort of mess around with that. This is something that I would want for logarithmic functions as well to work with NumPy. For logarithmic functions, we'd use log. So I can do log of 3t, and it'll give me a log function. Or if I want log of minus t, I can do that. However, if I want to work with, let's say, a polynomial, something like that, I don't need this NumPy command to do that. And in fact, that's going to give me some error. So I can get rid of everything after the t comma, and then I can start working with polynomials. Let's say I want just a quadratic. So for t squared, I want double star for the exponentiation. And then I could do, let's say, minus 4 times t. I want one star for multiplication. And then, I don't know, plus 2, right? And then we can run it. And that's going to give me the piece. So here I have my window set from negative 3 to 4 in the t direction. If I want to make it a little bit more, let's say negative 3 to 7, I get more of that parabola. So it looks good. So everything is working nice with uh, lint space. Just keep in mind in that second line of code, depending on the type of function, you might not even need any of that NumPy stuff. We can talk a bit about slope fields. So let's go to the 30, page 31. Sure. We can start taking a look at some slope fields. We just copy and paste the code. You want to keep in mind that Python, a little bit about Python, I believe it's based primarily on C++, but it is open source and a lot goes into it. So C, C++, Java, Perl, all sorts of stuff. But really, what Python truly is, is a bunch of little robots that are willing to do our bidding provided we can speak their language correctly. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I just copied and pasted the code. I run it. I am a robot does not compute. I am a robot does not compute. It doesn't like it. And let's see why. The line breaks and the indentations are very, very important in this case. If I take a look at what the code should be, it should be defining returning in one line, then the slope field plot command, and then plot x plot y. That's not what happened when I copied and pasted. I have to be on, on my, my best behavior. So enter for the slope field plot. I want to plot x, I want to plot y. Now this should work nicely. Okay, so we got the slope field. Slope fields um, are a little bit different in the way the variables are set up than the lin space command. Here we're talking about t as the input. Now here we have our traditional x and y's for our slope field on a differential equation. y prime is a function of x and y. Just worth mentioning. So here I can change the function if I'd like. Let's say I wanted instead x cubed minus 4 times y. I can do that. Uh, if I want to work with log functions, I can do that as well. I'm just going to need np back, log of x minus y, for example. OK. We can use exponential functions, np.exp, that's e to the power of, let's do x, squ x squared plus y in the exponent. I get that slope field as well. Here we have, in the slope field plot, we have the function, and then we have our range on x values, the horizontal axis, negative 2 to 2. We have our vertical axis, negative 1 to 2, which we can change, right? If I want to go, let's say, negative 3 to 7, I can do that. I want to go from negative 2 to 5, I can do that. It's working. It doesn't like that it's got to do so much work. But it does it. There it is. Now, you can mess with some of these other fields. Um, point 2, if I, if I change it, it's just going to change how many of these slope field um, ticks that I get. So let's say if I want to increase it to, let's do 0.5. We should see fewer of them and they're a bit more exaggerated. 
So we're back to the x squared minus y. So we'll see if we increase the 0.2 to the 0.5. Cause the desired effect. Let's go back to 0.2, our original one. If I go to 0.1, should be finer detail. Yeah, so much more nuanced there. If I want to alter the line width and get it to sort of meet whatever aesthetics I'd like, we'll bring it from 2 to 5. Should be, should appear sort of darker, uh, covering the plane a bit more. Yeah, I mean, you know, does it look cool? Sure. Is it more useful? I don't know. Maybe not. So we'll just set that back. And if I want some solution curves, oh, oh, yeah, I can go ahead and define solution curves. We'll do a copy and paste. Remember, robots, they don't like it. It's supposed to be x, y1, y2, and then returning y1, y2. So always check your sample code. If the line breaks, the indentations are important. And then here I can get on the next page these things to plot. Doesn't like it, of course. Should be slope field plot, expression plot. I've got another expression plot, plot x, plot y. Should be happy now. And now I have on top of the slope field here. And this is reset to its original. This was point 0.2. So reset to its original um, parameters. I have not only the same slope field, but now I have the solution curves over it. So it's calling back on that slope field F that I had defined earlier. Now, if I want to introduce more to this, it's just as simple as just getting creative with it. So I got Y1, Y2, and then I want Y3. Uh, let's change this to, we got SymPy for exponential e to the x, and I could do minus 5. And then I have to make sure that it knows that I want y3 included, and I should see it outputted now. That's the new one that I created. And then I just want to allow the expression plot to know as well that I've done this. So I got y1, y2, this should be for y3. I can let it run the same x direction. Uh, change the color. What do you like? C for Cory, C for Cyan. I think you're going to like this one. We can see this new one in Cyan. Very nice. Hey, I think that's probably enough sort of chit-chatting about Python. Hopefully this gets you started with the project a bit, exploring with the code, um, changing some of the fields to make Python do what you would like it to do. But as always, let me know what you think of the content, and I will see you next time for another Python video. Thank you so much for watching.